right uh, hello everyone so i hope that you have remembered what we have discussed in uh, statistical quality control right we have discussed so many concepts by now and uh, we have discussed uh, about the statistical quality control charts if you can remember there are two types of quality control charts that is we have the variable control charts and then we have the attribute control charts and we discuss about two types uh, and then we discuss uh, uh, about the variable control charts how to construct them and how to interpret them that is we discuss about the x bar chart r chart s chart right and in that case i mentioned you when it comes to the attribute control charts we uh, have a special chart which is known as the p chart so today we are going to discuss about the p chart throughout this session so these are the things that we are going to discuss right so we know when it comes to a control chart it is actually a graphical representation of your process what we do is we collect information from the process and we draw a graph and then we based on the graph we uh, take the decision that whether our process is in control or out of control right so in that case sometimes when we are constructing the control charts we are concerned about the attributes of the process right and sometimes we are concerned about the quantitative values right we know if we if we are concerned about the quantitative values we have to construct variable control charts and if we are uh, concerned about the attributes we have to go with the attribute control charts right so actually when you have a control chart the first thing is we by just looking at the control chart we can identify our processes in control or out of control and also when there is a deviation in the process that also can be identified by looking at the control chart right so as i told you it's a, it's always a graphical representation of the process and in that case uh, when you have a control chart we have a constraint so we have a reference uh, limits that is you have upper control limit you have a lower control limit and you have a uh, center line or the central limit so based on these constraints only we are getting to our decision whether our process is in control or out of control so in this case when it comes to a uh, p chart that is one of the most important uh, control charts in the field of statistical quality control what we do is when we are constructing the p chart we are measuring the number of uh, defectives or the number of non confirming items in your production okay so in that case what we do is uh, when we are measuring the number of defective so number of non confirming items in our production right so what are this number of non confirming items so so what are these defectives right so that is simply if you are running a production line right so there are so many uh, attributes that you are concerned about of your final product right sometimes those uh, the the things that you are concerned are uh, can be uh, measured using uh, quantitative values now for an example let's say you are running a garment factory and if you are producing uh, let's say you are producing trousers right so if you need to have two pockets in your trouser all the trousers which are coming out from your production line should contain two pockets right now let's say if one trouser uh, from the medium waist size right it uh, all the other things are okay but it contains only one pocket so even though all the other things are okay you cannot um, you cannot accept that item as a perfect item or a non defective one so you have to reject that item so likewise when you take your final product there are so many attributes that you are concerned about but if at least one of these attributes are not okay 
we label that particular item as a non-confirming or a defective item. So in P chart what we do is we observe our production line, we take samples and then we count the number of defective items in your production line and using those data we construct this P chart to find out whether our process is in control or out of control. Alright, so uh, uh, in order to construct the page chart, the most important thing that we want is the number of uh, defective items in a given sample of your process, right? So by looking at the p-chart, we can uh, get into the conclusion that whether our, sample, whether our process is in control or out of control. Alright, so when it comes to the, the statistical background of the p-chart, so now let's say we have taken a sample of size 20 from your production line and when you observe each and every product, that is if you observe, if you inspect all the 20 items, let's say you uh, have found two items as defectives, right? So we know when you take one item, it can be either a uh, defective or a non-defective good product or a bad product so it cannot be both right so because of that we can see a binomial distribution when we inspect uh, whether a given product is defective or not uh, by taking a sample from your production line so because of that when you are calculating the standard deviation in order to uh, calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limit of the p-chart we are using the standard deviation value based on the binomial distribution right so this is a very basic example for a p-chart so you can see you have the lower control li limit and you have the upper control limit and we have plotted data right so by looking this is a graphical representation of your process so by looking at this we can get into the conclusion whether our process is in control or not right and now uh, there are some criteria that you have to follow when you are constructing a P chart, right? That is now let's say you uh, you are running your process and we are going to construct a P chart by gathering information, gathering data. So in that case, the first thing is when you take uh, samples from your production line, when you take the sample size of each uh, subgroup that is when you take the sample size of each sample normally it should be greater than or equal to 50 it's not a must sometimes there are exceptional cases that we cannot follow this rule but it's always good if you can take samples of size 50 or even greater than that when you are collecting samples from your process right uh, in general the sample size is good if it is between 50 and 100 but we can accept even if it is more than 100 and sometimes there are exceptional cases where you have to accept when the sample size is even less than uh, 50 right and also when you take the samples you have to at least take 25 samples from your process or it can be even more than that right so same here if sometimes there are exceptional conditions where you cannot take 25 samples so they are accepted right but as a rule in general when you are taking samples you have to take at least 25 samples or more than that and each sample at least contain 50 observations or more than that if it is between 50 and 100 that is a perfect condition right and also there's another thing now when you are collecting samples let's say you have collected uh, 30 samples right so i told you when you take one sample the sample size should be uh, greater than or equal to 50 so in that case there are two conditions one is you can take if you have taken 50 samples you can uh, obtain let's say you have uh, obtained 30 samples in that case what you can do is you can keep the sample size equal in every sample that is you have obtained 30 samples with sample size of 50 
but it's not a must right so you can take different sample sizes as well let's say for the first sample you can go with the sample size of 50 for the second one 51 for the third one let's say 47 it, it's not a must so you can have equal samples equal sample sizes or uh, different sample sizes when you're constructing p chart but the only thing is the formula that we are going to use will be adjusted based on these two conditions so if you look at this example actually this is a part of a data set in the, this data set there are 25 uh, data points but i have shown you only the first 15 data points so if you look at here you have the information about the first 15 samples with their non-confirming items that is the number of defectives and the sample size if you look at the sample size column you have you can see it it's equal right you have 50 there so that is we have obtained equal sample sizes here so in this even you're constructing the p chart the first thing is you have to calculate the proportion so in that case if you take the first sample what you have to do is the proportion is equal to the there are 10 defectives and the sample size is 50 so you have to take 10 divided by 50 that is 0.2 and for the second sample 11 divided by 50 that is 0.22 and for the third sample 10 divided by 50 point two. likewise you have to take the number of defectives divide by 50 in order to calculate the uh, proportion value so since you have the same uh, sample size for each and every sample you take the number of defective and divide it by 50 to calculate the proportion value but let's say you have different sample size now look at the sample size column here you have different sample sizes right for an example for the first sample you have 50 observations and for the third sample 48 and for the fifth sample again 50 seventh sample 54 so you have different different sample sizes in that case again when you are calculating the proportion you have to take the defective uh, number of defective items divide by the sample size that is for the first sample you have 10 defectives you, so you take 10 divide by 50 so the proportion is 0.2 and when it comes to the second one you have 11 defectives divide by 51 that is 0.216 and let's look at the sixth sample you have 11 defectives sample size is 55 so 11 divided by 55 that is again 0.2 so likewise you can calculate the proportion uh, of the defectives for each and every sample even though the sample sizes are different or if it is the same right so after calculating the proportion values then we have to calculate the average of the proportions right so for that case first we'll consider the case where you have equal sample sizes that is our first example here you have the equal sample sizes where the sample size of each and every sample is equal to 50 so in that case when you are calculating the uh, average value of the proportion what you have to do is we are using this formula so the average value of the proportion is denoted by p bar so you take the total of the whole proportion all the proportions and then divide it by k so k is the number of samples of size n okay in that case uh, in this here for this example there are 25 uh, subgroups k values and only uh, there are 15 in the slides right so what you have to do is you have to take all the values here all the total of all the proportion values and then you have to divide it by 50 since you are concerning about uh, the same sample size uh, and each sample contains 50 observations so you take the total and divide it by 50 then you'll get this value as 0.192 okay and then 
uh, after calculating p bar value so what you have to do is after calculating the average value of the uh, proportions then we can calculate the sample error or the stand you can say the standard deviation of the population so as i told you this is following a binomial distribution so what you can do is here and when you are calculating the standard deviation or the sample error, you can use this formula that is p bar into 1 minus p bar divided by n. That is the common sample size. You whole thing, you have to take the square root. Right? And in this case, you can see uh, here we have taken the value that is... Uh, uh, Based on our previous information, we know P by is equal to 0 0.192 and uh, in that case, you can substitute 0 0.192 to the equation and find out the, the standard deviation value to construct the upper control limit and the lower control limit. And these are the equations that you have to use to construct the upper control limit and the lower control limit. So P bar we have already calculated and the standard error is also we have already calculated. So by substituting the values to these two equations that is P bar is 0.192 plus 3 times the standard deviation is 0 0.056 this is equal to 0 0.3 uh, 0.359 the lcl that is lower control limit is equal to 0 0.192 minus 3 times 0 0.056 this is equal to 0 0.025 uh, right so after constructing the and now here you have the proportion we have constructed the, the upper control limit and the p bar value and the lower control limit so you can now plot the values in in a graph right so first what you do is you take since the p bar value is common to all the observations because we have the same sample size and what you have to do is when you plot the you take the p bar as the center limit right or the central line right and then uh, the, you can see the upper control limit and the lower control limit they are also the same for all the observations that is because we are having the same sample size so you take the upper control limit values and the lower control limit value right and draw uh, you can draw uh, the upper control line and the lower control line uh, in a graph and then you can plot the proportions on the graph right so you can see the upper control limit is this that is 0 0.0 uh, 0.359 and the lower control limit 0 0.025 and you can see the p bar that is 0.192 that is our central limit and if you look at the data set you can see in the first sample the proportion is 0.2 in the second sample 0.22 that is here for the first sample it's 0.2 second sample it should be 0.22 likewise you have to plot your data set so based on this we can get into the conclusion whether our process is in control or out of control so if this we can observe a uh, random pattern uh, when we construct this p chart we can uh, interpret or we can get into the decision that our process is in control right so the next problem is what will happen if we have different different uh, uh, if we have different different sample sizes uh, when we are constructing the upper control limit and the lower control limit right so in that case when you have different different sample sizes when you calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limit you have to calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limit separately for each and every subgroup using this formula so you can see the same formula we have used right that is the upper control limit is p bar plus 3 times p bar the square root of p bar 
into 1 minus p bar over nk. So, nk is the sample size of the subgroup. So, it is different. It is a variable. So, uh, based on the values, you have to substitute the value for nk and calculate the lower control limit and the upper control limit for each and every subgroup separate. Right? Uh, so, in that case, uh, if you look at the first sample, now if you look at our, okay, here before that, I think there is a small error here. If you take this one, there is actually a small error. a small mistake here so when you are calculating the uh, uh, this average of the proportion values so if you look at the formula that is first you have to do is you have to take the total of all the proportions and divide it by the number of samples right so you can see here you have to divide as you have to divide it by the number of samples here we have 25 samples it should be 25 right not 50 okay so that is a typo so you have to because k is the number of samples of size n so we have uh, 25 samples of size 50 so th there is a mistake you have to divide it by 25 right and then if you take the next data set right that is Okay, so if you take the second data set, see, here you have uh, again 25 samples, only the first 15 data points are visible, but here you have different sample sizes. So in that case also, when you are calculating the average value of the proportion, that would be the same. Right, you can use the same formula that is you have to take the total of all the proportions and divide it by 25 since we have taken 25 samples. So the proportion would be the same when you have equal sample sizes and unequal sample sizes. Only different is coming when you are calculating the upper control and the lower control limits. Right. Uh, so in this case what you have to do is... Uh, right now for an example if you look at this now if you look at the first sample you can see you are you have 10 defectives and the sample size is 50 and you have the proportion but if you look at the p bar column that is the same 0.192 for all the values because p bar we have to use the same formula but if you look at the upper control limit the formula is different because in this case when you are calculating the upper control limit now p bar is 0.192 2 plus 3 times p by you can substitute and if you look at the sample size of the first uh, sample is it's 50 so that's why i have substituted 50 here right and when you are calculating the lower control limit also you have to substitute uh, 50 here as that is the sample size of the first sample so when you are calculating the upper control limit and the lower control limit to the second sample that sample size is 51 then you have to substitute 51 there so you will get different upper control limit and a different value for the lower control limit so when you have unequal sample sizes you can see the p bar value the central line it's not changing but the upper control limit and the lower control limit values are changing right you have different different values as for the upper control and the lower control limit but what we have to do is when you construct the p chart when you have unequal sample sizes now you have to uh, draw the central line using 0.192 that same as before and you have to plot the upper control limit values and the lower control limit values to get the upper control limit and the lower control limit line so that would not be a straight line it looks like this that is for an example for the first uh, data point uh, if you look at the lower control limit it's 0 0.01022 uh, and second one 0 0.019 see 0 uh, uh, 0.019 we ha can plot all the values for the lower control limit and all the values for the upper control limit and 
then we will not get to straight lines but we can see the limits right the range it's it's visible and but the central line it would be a straight line it, since it's not changing and then you can plot the proportion values on the graph and observe what is happening here right so after observing uh, after uh, constructing the p chart in order to determine whether our process is in control or out of control we can use these tips right that is actually what we need to do is we have to look at our control chart and we have to check whether there is a random whether the observations are random or if it is not random then there is something wrong with the process even though the uh, data points are within the range that is within the upper control and the lower control limit we cannot conclude that our process is in control if they are if they are not distributed randomly so that is when you plot this one if you can observe five sample means in a row it can be above or below the target or the reference line that is when you take the center line if you can observe five consecutive points below or above the center line that is there is something wrong with the process that will give you actually a warning signal right or else if you can observe six sample means in a row right that are steadily increasing or decreasing into a one direction then there is something wrong and if you can observe let's say 14 sample means in a row alternating above and below there is a pattern right it's not actually random then there is something wrong with the process or if you can observe 15 sample means in a row within one standard error of the target to uh, reference line then then again there is something wrong with the process so in all these cases even though our process the uh, values are in between the uh, the LCL that is an UCL upper control limit and the lower control limit we have to be concerned it gives us a warning signal that there is something wrong with the process right so we'll just look at this real world example and see so it says a local hospital emergency department manager keeps track of whether or not patients that are awaiting treatment are interviewed by a nurse within a standard time established by the department's medical director the medical staff requests the patients uh, be interviewed within 10 minutes of arrival to the emergency department waiting room each day 50 charts are reviewed and the waiting time is compared with the administration desk's uh, sign in time if the time elapsed is greater than 10 minutes the chart is counted as non-confirmed what will happen here in a particular hospital when a patient uh, comes to this hospital so after uh, the patient get registered he or she has to uh, be waited in a particular time before he or she examined by a nurse so this particular time should be less than 10 minutes that is the rule which has been given by the uh, hospital so what they have done is they have collected information from 50 patients and if this waiting time is greater than 10 minutes that patient has been considered as a non-confirming patient or a defective patient right so here this is the data set we have uh, selected 30 data points right so if you take uh, the first patient uh, if you take the first uh, if you take the first we have collected information from 30 days if you take the first uh, day one that is uh, we, we are collecting 50 information of 50 patients so in day one we have uh, it can be seen that the non-confirming charts the number of non-confirming charts uh, is equal to six that is six patients have been waiting more than 10 minutes in day one among 50 patients likewise if you take uh, day let's say day nine 
there are five patients who have been waiting more than 10 minutes among 50 patients. So likewise, we have con considered a period of 30 days in order to check whether the process is okay in this particular hospital or not. So here you have the same sample sizes. So that would be easy to construct. So the first thing is we have to calculate the uh, proportion for each and every sample. So if you take the first day, you have six defective sample size is 50. So six divided by 50 proportion is 0.12. In the next one, 8 divided by 50.16. Likewise, you can calculate the uh, proportion for each and every sample, right? And then to construct the chart, we know the next thing is what we have to do is we have to take the average value of the proportions. That is, we take the total of all these proportions. And since we have 30 days, uh, we have collected 30 samples so we have to divide it by 30 the total of the proportions divide we have to divide it by 30 right and then uh, right so in this case you can see when you uh, take the proportion value that is equal to 0 0.08 that is the mean value of the proportions that is the uh, center line of your control chart so you can construct the control chart with this center line and then you have to calculate the upper control limit and the lower control limit based on the uh, formula so we know uh, these two formulas Right, so these two formulas you can use. So P bar we already constructed 0 0.08 and then three times you have to construct the standard error. Right, the standard error can be constructed using this formula. So for N we have taken a sample of size 50. You have to calculate, uh, substitute 50 here and then based on the results, when you calculate so you can literally calculate the values at home and see. But the problem is you will see when you calculate the lower control limit, you will get an answer as minus 0 0.03. Right? The problem is when we are calculating the lower control limit and in the P chart, since we are concerning about the number of defectives, the number of defectives can never be a negative value right so when you are calculating the lower control limit based on your data set if you get a negative figure what you have to do is you have to set the lower control limit for zero right so because of that in this case i have uh, fixed my lower control limit for zero and the upper control limit i'll get it as 0 0.2 and the control uh, the central limit is 0 0.08 when we substitute the values for the equation so after that i have plotted see these are the upper control and the lower control limit and the central line and then i have plotted the proportion values of the 30 samples so you can clearly see the proportion values they have exceeded the uh, upper control limit right so that is anyway our process is not in control that is the first thing that we can see but here you can see some uh, patterns there are peaks uh, in some of these points and it, we can observe a pattern here, right? So when you interpret the uh, the graph, first thing is what we can see is the process is not, not in control, right? So there is no stability, uh, the waiting process is not stable, right? That is the patients were not consistently being seen within this 10 minute period. So, uh, and also there, there can be, uh, we can see a pattern in the control chart. So, when you observe these things in the control chart, now since we have found our process is not in control, so what we have to do is we have to stop our process and find out what are the assignable causes for this uh, out of control signal right so this uh, the department manager has uh, found out that uh, the there are peaks in this calendars and then when uh, the department uh, 
the, uh, the when the department has searched about this they have found out that uh, there are weekends and this uh, this was happening consistently during the weekends right because uh, when patient volume was uh, very high uh, during the weekends uh, there is a peak of the waiting time so what you can do is when you find this assignable course using uh, the first thing is using our chart we can uh, we can find our process is out of control so when it's out of control we have to stop the process and then we can find out the reason now since the reason is there is a peak during the weekend so then we can uh, give solutions for the process that is in this case the manager he has assigned more staff uh, during the weekends uh, to rectify the problem right so that's how you work uh, practically using the control charts okay and then uh, okay so if you look at this example so it says as the quality assurance manager for a small contract manufacturing company you have been notified by a customer that several recent order orders have been rejected due to non-confirming defects that were unacceptable the customer identified three separate defect categories however any one defect would cause the whole part to be rejected you have decided to evaluate the process by running several batches through production and then counting the number of parts that fail inspection for any reason right the uh, the data you collect is on the following page so now here what you have to do is again there is a small company and uh, uh, then uh, here what you have to do is some of their uh, batches have been rejected due to their manufacturing some defective items right so there are defective items in their badges so actually they have found out there are three types of defects but that doesn't matter even if you can find at least one defect in your product you have to reject the whole item all right so here we have to uh, check whether our process is in control or out of control by constructing a uh, P chart. So you can see you you are given with 25 samples and the number of uh, rejected items that is the number of defectives in each sample and you can see all the samples are in equal sample size. You have 100 samples here okay and then the first thing that you have to do is if you are going to construct a p chart based on this information first you have to calculate the sample proportions for each and every sample that is for first sample you the number of defective items uh, is equal to 4 and the sample size is 100 that is 4 divided by 100 for the second sample you have five defective sample size is 100 5 divided by 100 likewise you have to calculate the proportion for each and every sample and then what you have to do is you have to take the average value of the whole average value of all the proportions right you take the total of the proportions divided by 25 since you have 25 samples and then based on the formulas you can calculate the uh, standard error and then the upper control control limit and the lower control limit in this case also you will see when you calculate the uh, lower control limit you will get it as a negative number right so we cannot accept negative numbers for lower control limit so whenever you get a negative number you have to set it as zero right so in this case also lower control limit is zero upper control limit is 0.115 and the standard error is 0 0.021 and the average of the proportion values that is equal to 0 0.049 okay and then so we can plot the data here right so if you observe this uh, these values you can see at the end we can all the data points are within the upper control and the lower control limit but at the end you can see a increasing pattern right so when you are going to uh, interpret the process 
even though all the points are within the upper control and the lower control limit you cannot just say this is in control right because uh, here you can see an increasing trend and it's not random so you can uh, say the process is uh, it's giving you a signal to be out of control that is the process is trending out of control because uh, when you observe the process we can see five sample means in a row above the reference line right you can see five sample means in a row above the uh, reference line when you observe this one. And also if you uh, check more than six sample means on an increasing trend, right? So that is we can clearly see the process, the trend is increasing at the end. So that is we, the process is giving you a warning signal that is the process is near to uh, get an out of control signal so what you have to do is you have to shut down the production line and check what are the reasons for this behavior right see if you look at at the end of the process it's showing an increasing trend right and if you count these values one two three four five six the last six observations they are you can see they are showing an increasing trend okay so likewise you have uh, you can see these things in this is not random so in this case also you cannot conclude that the process is uh, in control right so likewise by uh, calculating the upper control limit lower control limit the central line based on your data set we can uh, construct the p-chart and determine whether your process is in control or not so just as the x-bar chart s-chart and r-chart p-chart is also one of the most important charts in statistical quality control but actually p-chart is much easier to construct because we don't need the factor uh, table here based on our data set we can quickly calculate the values uh, for the p chart right so i hope you understand uh, about how to construct the p chart and how to interpret your results based on uh, based on what you have found right i hope you understand the examples as well uh, so we will be discussing uh, now we have discussed all the types of control charts so we are not going to discuss uh, any more about the control charts in our next sessions so actually we have only two more things to discuss to cover the syllabus so uh, if you have any question please let me know and thank you